By the end of this video, you will learn how to start analyzing DNA on your computer using Python by counting the frequency of bases in the entire genome of the bacteria Carcinella rodi. DNA, also known as deoxyribonucleic acid, is a molecule that encodes genetic information for making RNA and proteins as genes and chromosomes inside cell nuclei that determine characteristics and functions, like binary ones and zeros, but for living organisms. It has a double helix structure made of four molecules called nucleotides, adenosine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, which are attached to a ribose sugar. About 3.2 billion of these make up the human genome. Nucleotides join adjacently with phosphodiester bonds between specific carbon atoms of a ribose sugar to form a strand. The double helix structure is due to the double hydrogen bonds between adenosine and thymine and triple bonds between cytosine and guanine. DNA wraps around nucleosomes which are made of eight histone proteins. These then form a 30 nanometer supercoiled array called chromatin. Chromatin bundles together to form chromosomes which are found in cell nuclei. Now we've had a quick recap on what DNA is, let's see how we can start using computers to analyze it. First, we need to install Python, which can be done by going to python.org and following the download instructions if you haven't already installed it. To confirm it's working, open terminal and type python hyphen hyphen version. This should show you the version of Python you're running and means you've got it working. Next, you need an IDE. I'll be using Visual Studio Code and you can download it from the link in the description, but you can use whatever you prefer. If you're using VS Code, you'll need the Python extension. Once it's installed, we're ready to start analyzing DNA. Now let's create a new file and call it sequencecount.py. This is just the file extension for Python files. We can then open it in VS Code by opening Terminal. Quick tip, you can type cmd in the file explorer to open Terminal. Then type in code followed by a period to open the current directory in VS Code where we can see our files. As DNA can be represented by the letters A, G, C, and T, in Python we can represent DNA as a string, which is just a sequence of characters like DNA that can be stored in a variable. For example, here I've stored the sequence in a variable seek. This won't actually do anything, so we need to define a function to do something. Let's make one to count the number of bases in a strand of DNA. First, we define our function called count sequence length. Next, add the sequence we want to count and try printing. To run this code, we need to add these lines to let Python know what code we want to run. To run your code, press the green play button in the top right corner of your screen. This will open a terminal window where you will see the output of your code. It's only the sequence, but we want to know the length of our sequence, so let's fix that. To do this, we will use the length function built into Python. This is a function that takes in a string as an argument and outputs the number of characters in the string. Our code basically says print length sequence, which I think is pretty straightforward. Press save and run the code. It outputs 9. The human genome is around 3.2 billion bases long. Having the whole sequence in our code would be messy, so we should import the sequence from an external file. A common file type used to store DNA sequences is the FASTA file. These are just formatted text files with the extension .fasta, .fna or .fa. Here's an example with two sequences, biospace 1 and 2. Each sequence begins with an identification line. The line always starts with the greater than symbol, followed by the name of the sequence and any extra information. After that line, the sequence starts until another sequence identification line is found. To work with these files, we need to read, clean and pass them in Python. So let's write a function to do that. I've left the download link to the FASTA file for the entire genome of Carcinella Ruddy in the description. So download that and put that in the file where your Python file is located. First, we need to define a new function to take in the file location, then open, read, pass it, and return the sequence in a format we can use. Make a variable to store our FASTA dictionary, which is just a collection of key value pairs so we can store multiple sequences. A variable to store the sequence label identifiers as we go through the for loop. Next, we need to open and read our FASTA file using the open function, which takes in two arguments, the file path and an action, in our case, read, and loop through each line of our FASTA file. Remove any extra spaces and new line characters from the line. If the line starts with a greater than symbol, it must be an identification label. So let's set the line as our FASTA label, but exclude the first character, which is the greater than symbol. Set the label as the key in our FASTA dictionary and set the value as an empty string, else it must be part of the DNA sequence. And add the line of sequence to the FASTA dictionary under the key of the current FASTA identifier label at the end of its value. Finally, return our formatted FASTA dictionary. To help understand what the for loop is doing, you can pause the screen and run through the code line by line using this example sequence. Let's see if this works by counting the length of our bacterium's DNA sequence. First, let's call our new function and set the output as sequences. Now let's get our sequence by accessing it under our sequences dictionary, under the label of choice, which can be found in your FASTA file. 
Run your code and you should get some results. This bacterium has one of the smallest genomes in the world. Here's a quick function that counts the frequency of bases in a sequence. First, from the collections lab, we import the counter function. Next, we define our new function. Then, reuse these same lines here. And finally, call the counter function on sequence and print out the result. Replace the function that we want Python to run, and then run our code. It will print the results out. We've learned the basics of what DNA is and how it can be analyzed in the computer. They're incredibly powerful and carry out tasks humans wouldn't be able to do, giving us greater insight into proteins and RNA. For more in-depth information, you can visit the post on biospace.xyz. The link is in the description below, where you can also find all the links used in this video. Subscribe and turn notifications on to be alerted when the next video is out. If you have any feedback or tips on how to improve, as this is my first video, please leave them in the description below, along with any questions. And thank you for watching.